Mandel said, remember in the United States Constitution, is the law that allows people to not be held accountable for the crimes they committed. committed. In today's world, we find this simply unacceptable. From side government, we have two things we want to talk about in today's debate. Number one, we will tell you why this part of the law is unjustified and can no longer exist. Secondly, we will tell you why the information we get later on will be extremely <coughs> beneficial. When you look at the reality of the situation, criminals or individuals who are covering up for other criminals tend to get away with this law because it gives them a certain amount of immunity from the law. And the principles of law and what the courts stand for, justice must be served by way of you punishing those individuals who have committed those crimes. We don't think that this is the law that must stand. So when it comes to why this law is unjustified, let's take a step back and understand what kind of harm are, what kind of harms are accrued when someone hides this information, right? You need to understand. When you have an individual that is on trial, who is supposed to be cross-checked in the court, the reason why he or she may read the Fifth Amendment is probably because they have caused some amount of harm, or the people <coughs> that they are trying to protect has caused some amount of harm yeah, yeah. towards a particular certain, to a particular group of society, anyone for that matter. So, or else there wouldn't be a reason for them to keep this information and to not <coughs> incriminate themselves, right? You use this for others too, and we find this not just so, so when you look at the criminals and how criminals should be punished, let's look at what the state must do and what the court system supports the, the state to do. The state should make sure that this kind of immunity is not given to these individuals to make sure that they can run scot free. That is what should happen in the but unfortunately, the contradiction is happening. So, so let's look at the principles of self-defense. Like to what extent do we allow individuals to defend themselves? In a court of law, in modern society, you need to understand when you are able to defend yourself, it means you are able to defend your life and your freedom. And we think under the proposal of the government side, with the removal of this constitutional law, which is a farce, you will still have an ability to defend yourself in a court of law. Because when you go to court, you are judged based on evidences and facts that are presented by both parties. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, what you will be able to do is defend yourself in the court of law, within the realm of the court, to ensure that your freedom is there and your freedom is not taken away. So we're not being unjust to them. We're not being unfair to them. We are telling you that the reality is you can't get away with the things you do. So what do we allow you to do within status quo? I'll take you in a minute, right, on you? What do we allow people or prosecutors of the law, or people to do with regards to law? First and foremost, we don't allow individuals to flee. That means you can't leave the jurisdiction yeah, if you're being called by court, especially when we subpoena you, right? Secondly, we don't allow individuals to lie to court. Yeah, Nobody yeah. likes lying, right, guys? You don't allow individuals to commit perjury in court. So the third thing is that we also don't allow individuals <coughs> to fabricate evidences. Yeah, yeah. And the last thing is that we don't allow individuals to um, to, uh, to acquire unfair advantage over and uh, over another person or situation. For example, witness intimidation, right? All these examples are important because all of this has the same effect with the Fifth Amendment. People get to do, uh, people get to avoid ever being charged. So the principal conclusion to this argument is simple. The immunity that we are rewarding these people with is a basic blatant miscarriage of justice and is contradictory and redundant to the principles of what law is and how people should be judged within the state as well. Let's go on to the second idea. Before that, yes. Um, do you accept that the right to remain silent starts the moment you are arrested? Look, when uh, thank you for discussing this, yeah. So when we have the Miranda rights read to you, you say whatever you use, whatever you say will be used against you in the court of law. When a cop catches you, yes, you need out the Miranda rights and you have the right to remain silent. But the reason why you have the right to remain silent is because you want to ensure that this person is, doesn't give out information that he doesn't know might be beneficial or not before a lawyer comes here. Yeah. In court, the Fifth Amendment with a lawyer allows you to remain silent under the yeah. policy, yeah. which is in this court. And that is not beneficial for anyone. I will tell you why it is not beneficial, because our policy brings the benefits. Let's look at the three things or three benefits we bring, right? Number one, 
We feel from side government, this principle is easy. A lot more information will lead to a lot more accurate accuracy with regards to the facts and evidences of the trial. Yeah, in a nutshell, you may look like an assumption, but let me explain to you why the accuracy is important and how we achieve this. First and foremost, the information you get from these people when they are no longer allowed to hide behind the veil of immunity allows you to change the course of that trial with regards to the facts and evidences or information you receive. So if in fact they were supposed to give, be given a harsher punishment, maybe with this, with this particular form of uh, uh, information, you are now able to reduce that punishment, vice versa. It is important because it changes the outcome and conclusion of that trial. Secondly, what happens is that with more information and a higher rate of uh, accuracy, you want to ensure that these individuals no longer are able to protect others to extend their immunity to another person who may be a criminal. A yeah. benefit from side government is that we take away the opportunity and possibility for kingpins and drug mills, drug lords, or any other traffickers or cop individuals who engage in corporate espionage to deal uh, to, to engage and avoid other of the other friends or other people from being incriminated. Why is this important? The links between these people is giant spider web. Yeah. What cases are built upon is cases that is supposed to persecute you, you, and you. We think there is a larger scale of things and a larger spider web of hand. When you want to talk about corporate espionage or drug trafficking or human trafficking for that matter, there's so many people who are complacent to that crime. Which means our policy firstly removes the repetition of this crime happening, and secondly, you have a better and meaningful construction to a case that allows you to catch all these people that these people hide behind the movie that's currently existing. Lastly is the witness intimidation. Let's look at the reality. Some people are just scared, right? They're not sure what they see. But let's look at the reality. Right now, with the Fifth Amendment, because you can read the Fifth Amendment, persecutors will have an incentive to link you to a particular crime, even though you may have nothing to do with the crime. Which means it's an unnecessary thing that is brought into the court and is discussed and is time wasting and is counterproductive to all members of the judicial process. Mr. Speaker, if there is a lie in the 